I'm with Greg Borenstein, futurist consultant from the Minority Report TV show. And Greg's been helping us understand this morning that Star Trek got it all wrong. <laughs> the communicator was so far off today's mobile phone. So where do humans go wrong when we look at predictions for the future as they apply to marketing, Greg? I think one of the places we go wrong is um, assuming that what's happening now will just kind of continue on in a continuous trend. That as something is growing, it will continue to grow and then it won't get to, you know, it will get to just some incredibly huge stage where things tend to grow and then reach a saturation point and slow down. Um, and then another, one of the other really big ways that we, we miss is oftentimes the opposite of that, where we see things growing slowly and we miss exponential growth where the last few changes are all the difference. So for example, in the Human Genome Project, right. sequencing the human genome, it's an enormous project that was worked on for 15 years and 99% of the work was done in the last three months. Wow. Not because people weren't working on it, yeah. but because the technology was increasing and doubling and doubling and mm -hmm. that last doubling is all of the power. Or also the same thing with the history of computing and the, the people who understood the power of computation, Moore's law and the doubling of computational mm -hmm. power. There were 12 people who understood that law in the mid 60s and we know all their names because they founded all the computing companies in the world because it really is those huge changes that can suddenly make dramatic differences. So those are the kind of two sides, like missing what looks right. like permanent, seeing a change now and thinking it's permanent progress. Yeah. And on the opposite side, seeing, oh, it's this little thing that nobody cares about and missing like mobile, like missing that it will go in a blink of an eye to being ubiquitous because it has that doubling property. Do you think that that could be happening right now with augmented reality and virtual reality as well? So I actually think that one of the biggest problems people are having right now in thinking about new technology is caused by the mistake of thinking that mobile is something that's going to happen again. Like we, we, the thing we've learned because we've just lived through this transition to mobile mm -hmm. is like once every 20 years there's a technology as big as mobile and there has never been a technology as big as mobile ever in human history. Like I, I talked to an anthropologist recently who told me that in, across all human societies in all times and places, there have traditionally been two things that everyone carried. And one of them was a store of value, like a purse or a wallet or a, some kind of thing you put your valuables in. And the other one was a token of access, a key. And now there's a third one, which is a smartphone. And that's in you know 60,000 years of recorded human history. There's never been a, something added to that list. So thinking that the next technology that comes around is also going to do that is absurd. You called out face recognition technology, and not many marketers are doing much with that right now. Should they be? What are we missing there? Or is it not going to be as big as people think? Well, I think face, face recognition, like many other machine learning and AI technologies, is going to be really big and important. But one of the things that is easy to miss in it, because in, in many ways it's different than other technologies, is that you, in order to do meaningful work with those technologies, you need to have access to enormous amounts of data. It's not a coincidence that Google, and especially in face recognition, Facebook, has the ability to do things that literally no one else has. You know, Facebook has 1.6 billion users, each of whom has however many dozens or hundreds mm -hmm. of photos. They just have access to more photos. They have access to more photos than any other source in history by an enormous amount. They have more data about whose faces are in those photos. And without that kind of scale, it's just very difficult. It's not about engineering practice or design practice. You really need this like massive resource of this data. So in some ways, we're stuck waiting for them to provide services that we can then use to build applications, which is coming. And so that's one thing to look very carefully at is to watch serve the services like that that are coming in object recognition or face recognition and to try to find ways to use those things. Great. Well, thank you very much for talking with us, Greg. Thank you. Thank you.